What exactly is depression, freezing point, and what does it have to do with colligative properties? We'll address that, but what is freezing in the first place? Let's go right from the basics. When the vapor pressure of the liquid phase is equal to that of the solid phase, we say that something freezes. So, uh, it sounds a little bit of a mouthful, but what I'm trying to say is you keep the temperature constant and you keep increasing the pressure, the liquid turns to a solid. This is something you know from lower grades as well. What is interesting here is that atmospheric pressure has no role to play. Okay, It was similar when we had the liquid and the gaseous phase, but their atmospheric pressure was in the picture because that was what the pressure of the outside world was like. right? But here, this has no bearing. Okay, cool. That was what freezing was all about. Before we go forward, a couple of things that you need to keep in mind. Yeah, Properties that depend only on number of particles known as colligative properties. And the first colligative property that we look at is relative lowering of vapor pressure that only depends on number of particles because, well, this is the cause of all the other colligative properties. Yeah. So if you are not familiar with this, my suggestion is to go check out the video on this. One is solvent, two is solute. I'm going to keep using this thing over and over again. Okay, delta P1 is the lowering of vapor pressure relative to the pressure, vapor pressure of the pure solvent. This ratio is going to be equal to the mole fraction of the solute, which simplifies to this expression only and only when N2 is much lesser than N1. Okay, let's get back to what we are talking about. Freezing point is clear. What is depression in freezing point and what does it have to do with colligated properties? Well, say you're in a really cold place. And, you know, there's a lot of ice around. If you live in such a place, you know the best way to deal with ice is to add a little bit of salt to it and it melts right away. Nothing else. No heat, nothing. That works. Why does adding of salt help? We'll try and address that. Salt is a non-volatile solute. And you'll see this beautiful graph that's on the screen. Don't get scared. We'll talk about all of this. There is something called liquid there, something called gas. And I have said that atmospheric pressure is one atmosphere. If this setup is new to you, I would strongly recommend check out the video on elevation and boiling point. It has a similar treatment. If you haven't seen that, that's all right. We'll quickly revise that as well. But this is, they're all related. Okay, all colligative properties are related. Okay, you add salt, which is a non-volatile solute, and it lets ice thaw out easily. We'll explore that. But before we go to that side, what is easier to understand is when you increase the temperature, pressure increases. For a pure solvent, this is how the line looks like, right? Okay, cool. On top, you've got the liquid. Here, you've got the gas. Hmm. Okay, cool. Kind of makes sense. Yeah. If I keep a constant pressure, let's say instead of atmospheric pressure, if I am at a you know high altitude place, then this liquid will boil easily. Yeah. Here, it was boiling at some temperature. This is a lower temperature. So all that you can figure out using this beautiful graph. Now, the interesting thing is that as soon as I add a non-volatile solute, at every point, there will be a lowering of vapor pressure, which will help me forge a new line which is going to show, be shown by this yellow colored thing where you talk about solute plus solvent. This was a treatment for studying the increasing boiling point which was this right here. Okay, And it's the same thing. I'm just going to expand it on the other side if you know what I'm talking about. Boiling is when atmospheric pressure is equal to the pressure of the system and this is where elevation of boiling point happens. Now, why are we talking about all this? There's more to the story. Yeah. I can draw another line, okay? Check this out. And green always represents a pure solvent. This line, what is this about? What are we talking about here? Okay, 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 cool. Let, let's see. I'm drawing another line. Wow, this is getting a bit too much, isn't it? Well, if this top part is a liquid, the bottom part is a gas, on this side, you have a solid. Now, in some books, they maybe only show this part of the graph or they show you this part of the graph yeah i want to show both of these graphs in perspective that they're the same graph okay uh, <laughs> so all right now if the, this line shows you ki, ah, i've got a gas and this is quite crazy yeah if i keep increasing the pressure and water is a little weird okay usually when you increase the pressure things are supposed to uh, solidify water is weird we'll talk about that in different videos right now let's focus on this green and this yellow line so this yellow line caused an elevation and boiling point that you can clearly see. What it also does is that it forges a new solid line because of which the yellow line, by the way, is solute plus solvent. There is a lowering of freezing temperature as well. You don't see that? Do you see it? Hold on. Let me draw a couple of lines over here that will show you constant temperature parts of this graph. You see here and here we are talking about the freezing point being lowered and on this case, on the other side, we're looking at the boiling point being increased. 
and they are the part of the same graph. That's what I wanted to tell you. Depression and freezing point seem like a complicated thing, but it's really not. Yeah. What is essentially happening is that liquid stays liquid over a wider temperature range, which is shown by this yellow line. It's a wider temperature range than just the pure solvent. You can see that on this graph. That's why I wanted to give this to you. Although maybe in some textbooks, they don't show you this whole graph at our level of 11th and 12th standard chemistry. Okay, cool. With that out of the way, let's do a little bit of math to see what this actually looks like. What do we do with this? Okay, I've proved to you that using salt, I was able to thaw this, uh, the ice easily. And that was because practically speaking, the freezing point is lowered, which means liquid stays liquid instead of zero degrees Celsius. Maybe it will stay liquid till four minus four degrees Celsius, right? So that's great. That's great. So even at low, really, really scary temperatures, water stays as water and not solid. So it's easy for us to get rid of it. So just like the boiling point treatment, I'm going to repeat that. If you have seen that video, awesome. If you're not, don't worry about it. TF naught is the boil is the freezing point and T dash F or just TF is the new freezing point with the yellow stuff, which is the solvent plus solute and delta TF is the depression in freezing point. After this, the mathematical treatment is not that complicated. All you've got to do is remember that this is a effect of the lowering of vapor pressure, which itself was a colligated property independent only on number of particles. So I'm gonna write that one more time. Depends only on number of particles, right? And delta TF, number of particles, what particles? Solute particles. So delta TF depends on solute particles and also the mass of the solvent. We're going to take the bottom part as a statement of fact right now. Yeah. But you can pause the video and think, okay, if I give you this expression, do you know of a concentration term that fits nicely into this that would make our life easy? Think, yeah. Number of moles of solute divided by mass of solvent. If you're thinking molality with the L, not molarity, molality, you're absolutely right. So delta TF is given by this expression and it was proportional to molality. Let's put the proportionality constant to be equal to KF. And if you don't remember what molarity is, don't worry, we've got you covered. Molarity is moles of solute in one kilogram of solvent, not solution. This is important. That's why it's a cool thing to measure because it doesn't change with temperature, right? Remember, molarity would change with temperature because you've got, you've got volume of solution at the denominator, right? So it's got mass of the solvent, doesn't change with temperature. Awesome. What is Kf? I'll give you the theory here. Yeah, F right here represents freezing temperature. This is delta H fusion, which is the enthalpy of fusion at that temperature. M1 refers to the molar mass of the substituent one. What is one? Oh, wait, it's that solvent itself the pure solvent r is the you know the usual gas constant there's a factor of thousand because of the conversion of units okay this is known as the cryoscopic constant don't worry about it it is useful in numericals and in question which is why i'm giving you this and in some books this derivation also is given if you want to check that out now as always we're going to take one to be the solvent two to be the solute and it's called color coordinated i can write down another expression for this molality itself it's going to be in the top right corner as you can see n2 divided by the mass w in grams multiplied with thousand maybe you've seen this somewhere why we multiply thousand because remember i need one kilogram of solvent and if i have mass in grams then thousand grams is one kilogram you see beautiful units cancel out and you've got one kilogram again so see that's why there's a thousand there I know this may seem like it's <laughs> stuff that you could do easily, but it's important to do this a couple of times so that you don't ever question yourself. Why is there a thousand here? What's that doing there? And don't forget it in an actual test or an exam. Okay, this is how this works. And if I substitute all of these values into to be W, which is the mass of the uh, solute itself divided by its molar mass, you get this expression. And what do you do with all of this? Well, I can use it to calculate the molar mass M2 of the solvent itself if delta tf and m are given so and if they're not if if say m2 and m are molality are given you can find out delta tf and m this is it this was a quick 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 uh actually quite detailed idea into depression of freezing point i hope you enjoyed it and give us feedback in the comments